Now, behind the Operation Mushtarak offensive in southern Afghanistan lies a new counterinsurgency strategy built around the four aims shape, clear, hold, and build. And Channel 4 News has had unique access to the strategic operations and preparations behind this latest offensive. For the month leading up to Operation Mushtarak, video journalist Vaughan Smith has embedded with the Grenadier Guards in Helmand province, in the central Nadi Ali district, based at an old British fort, now called Camp Shawakat. He went north with the troops as they tried to weaken the Taliban. With an ambush behind insurgent lines, he then travelled with the soldiers as they cleared the village of Kushal Kalai of roadside bombs and tried to hold and build in the area. Vaughan Smith's report gives a remarkable inside view of the counterinsurgency strategy behind the operation. It's six o'clock in the morning and British troops are trying to take the war to the Taliban. It's just the one bit I don't like when we have to like, get back to our own house. We should hate it in return, so. The reconnaissance platoon of the Grenadier Guards and a unit from the Afghan National Army are taking over a local family's compound, paying 200 pounds to use the building, more for any damage caused. They're two miles behind enemy lines and are going to ambush insurgent fighters. Well, that one's off, Roger. Captain uh, Jim Young uh, is commanding the operation, one of many designed to weaken, or as the army say, to shape, to the Taliban in preparation for Operation Moshtarak. So what we've done is we've pushed forward, and the whole idea is basically we're harassing them, is to put the shoe on the other foot for once, because at the moment, um, all they have to do is put an IED down, and they can focus this in one area. What's that? What would you say that is a good foot? In the uh, room over there, we've got rants uh, digging away, getting a murder hole in. Um, good cover, using the, their own compound, using their own wall. Murder um, hole? That, that's a shoot through. Well, yeah, it's basically they use them against us, and we found it's a good way of obviously using it against them too. That's it on the, on the wall. 20 past seven at the moment, so usually they've got to get up. I was going to say have a wash and shave, but they don't wash and shave. Um, have the breakfast, and then uh, they should be uh, game on. <laughs> so I have to just wait and see. <laughs> and it doesn't take long. That's much <sighs> Just starts going to get some scuff on. Let's work out what direction is that coming in. Is that actually at us or somewhere else? Captain Young decides not to respond immediately, waiting to draw the Taliban fighters in closer. I reckon that's more probing. That's a recce by fire. They think they're over here, we're just waiting for a reaction. No. That was close. <laughs> well guys, just uh, watch out, that was definitely close. You're looking at about 100 meters crack. The section reveal their position to further entice the insurgents into the trap. And Captain so Young also has soldiers hidden in three nearby compounds providing support. That small arms fire they just had, uh, that was accurate 700 metres. Um, that's sharpshooter bordering on sniper because um, actually it was probably about four or five inches below um, one of the packs on there, one of my fire compounds. Um, perfect because we've got a couple of snipers here and they're going to do some counter sniper uh, fire. Uh, one's setting up to actually take the kill, the other's going to be the one to actually try and draw them out. Oh, one draft, Roger. Make sure if you fire it, it's limited and it's just on the compound to move them. A sergeant fires his machine gun, although only into an empty field. He wants to create the impression of returning fire, but actually it's just another tactic to encourage the Taliban to expose their positions. When they do, high-powered sniper rifles kill the targets. These weapons are increasingly favoured by NATO troops. Their accuracy significantly reduces the risk of civilian casualties. Yeah. Chunk out the wall. <laughs> Fifteen hours later, the platoon leaves, using darkness as a cover. So, good insertion. Good act. We got two kills, uh, including, I'd say, a sharpshooter. It shows the local nationals that we got freedom to move, and more importantly, it shows insurgents that they can't ever take anything for granted.
The main base for the Grenadier Guards is locally called the British Fort, a relic from the military adventures of the 1880s. And the men in charge here are Lieutenant Colonel Roland Walker and his Sergeant Major Ian Farrell. How's the security been? They are at the forefront of the British counterinsurgency effort to shape, clear, hold and build within the Nadi Ali district. As we go about this operation, just remember it's not all about the Taliban. If you look at the whole of Mostarak, the whole point of Mostarak is uh, to restore governance to Nad Ali district. Right. An offensive operation in a counterinsurgency is about taking that away from the insurgents that they can't afford to lose, which is simply put, is control of the population. Colonel Walker has been commanding the Grenadiers in Afghanistan for five months. It is a war that has been as dangerous for commanders as for their soldiers. Is it fun hunting men? It's exhilarating, truly exhilarating. Uh, it's a high price. If you get it wrong, and if you're caught out, and if you turn into being the hunted, then it can be pretty frightening. But if you can personalize it, and you can lay the traps, and you can draw them in, um, then yes, it's, it's very exhilarating. Salam Baba. Today, troops are clearing Kushal Kale, a village two miles south of the base, with the help of the Afghan National Army. Uh, reports from Wizard 3-0 of a contact IED uh, monitor these means. Did you pick that up from Wizard 3-0, over? What happened, Colonel? Over? It's uh, just reports coming in of a contact IED in uh, Kushal Clay again, another one. So, I'll have to wait to see what happens. Eight o'clock in the morning. Half a mile outside the village, Lieutenant Colonel Walker and his men are told that an improvised explosive device has been detonated. They wait for word of casualties. Um, just start to patrol, just to break into the village. And unfortunately, there's, a, there's an IED place behind a wall, which, um, which went off. 17 minutes later, American Mercy helicopters arrive to evacuate the injured to the nearest field hospital. Three Afghan soldiers were killed by the roadside bomb, and one British and two Afghan soldiers were lightly wounded. We're just trying to get uh, the engineer, sort of high research team down to clear that junction, because we know it's had IEDs before. Clear that junction, and then we're going to blow all the compound walls, the low compound walls, so they can't uh, put anything else behind them. The soldiers believed that the booby trap that caused the Afghan National Army, or ANA, casualties was armed by the Taliban only the night before. There's an explosion earlier, yeah? Um, apparently this is where the contact explosion was on the ANA vehicle. Yeah. Um, probably think it was on a command pole, which meant they pulled the string for the, the device to go off. Is it a wire? Nah. You can see a wire under the wall? It's hard to see it, but I'll just have a little dig around. Yeah. So what's your job? My job as a searcher would be road party isolations, just that kind of stuff. It's quite fun in a way, but it's extremely dangerous, but you don't think about the dangerous part of it, you just crack on with it, to be honest. What you got? We've got a uh, founder wire hidden in the ground was a find. This could lead to another device or uh, it could be an RC to that other device there. So we're going to push back the same way we came and uh, report it. You got a grid now? Right, 147. Radio yeah. controlled and so called yeah. command wire mines are common yeah. now, but the Leave Taliban up. are constantly adapting their bomb making techniques to avoid detection. Fine! These days, insurgents are using less and less metal in their IEDs, which means British troops have to use more sophisticated technology to find and destroy them. Jump by! Fire! We 
we can search, when we find IDs, we can neutralize them, and make it safe for our guys to come through. It's a risky business, but we have philosophies and principles and SOPs which reduce that risk as much as we can do. Uh, SOPs that are basically written in blood over years in Northern Ireland, uh, people who've been killed, uh, things we've learned from previous devices about terrorist tactics. On the junction where the Afghan soldiers were killed, the bomb disposal unit found three other devices. Each costing just a few pounds to make, the operation to remove them took eight men three painstaking hours using millions of pounds worth of equipment. With the village cleared, the Grenadiers planned to hold it and build up a security presence. Within 36 hours, compounds have been constructed and locals are invited to a meeting, a shura. Hosted by the district governor, Habibullah. This is the beginning of governance being reasserted into this area and that's what this is about. Not much I'd like to think it's a straightforward military operation. It's about the governor and getting his people. Yeah. For showing up to the Shura, the villagers are given blankets, radios and Wellington boots. Within a week, most of the soldiers will have left to be replaced by the Afghan police. The success of Operation Moshrak in Kushal Kalei will be measured in years, not days. Filmmaker Vaughan Smith was working with the Grenadier Guards Battle Group. A soldier serving with that battle group was killed today, one of two British fatalities in Afghanistan this day. Next of kin have been told.